Art and activism have walked hand in hand since probably the beginning of time, from the ancient Egyptians to the Romans to muralists here in Los Angeles, artists use their craft to make all sorts of political statements. And that's true in music as well. Beethoven originally dedicated his third symphony to Napoleon. But when Napoleon crowned himself emperor, Beethoven got so mad that he scratched out the dedication on the title page, ripping a hole in the manuscript. Some of the most compelling political music comes from Soviet Russia. Government authorities gave strict rules about what was and was not acceptable music for composers to write. One of these composers is Mieczysław Weinberg, composer of the ballet The Golden Key. So who was Weinberg? If we look at the 20th century, we could say it was quite a bit a century of turbulences. In the life of Mieczysław Weinberg, we could see almost all of them. So he was born in Warsaw in 1919 in a Jewish family. And when he was 20, he had to escape from the <coughs> German authorities. His parents and his sister ended up in a concentration lager. After Shostakovich learned one score by Weinberg, he helped him to come to Moscow where Weinberg stayed for the rest of his life. And although he had then this given homeland, he had to suffer quite a bit there as well. I mean, this is incredible. He escaped Nazi persecution but only to encounter... The Soviet totalitarianism. Yeah. Escaping from a wolf, he uh, met a bear. How does the Golden Key fit into that picture? Was it a piece that was considered acceptable to the Soviet authorities? I think we can definitely connect it to a certain political surface through the story we have. The Golden Key is a story by Tolstoy it's an allegory of the triumph of the weak over the strong. The music of this ballet is, is just adorable. The main character is Buratino, a puppet sort of loosely based on Pinocchio, but the similarities break down quickly. The puppet maker, Papa Carlo, takes Buratino to a show by Carabas Barabas. Carabas Barabas is an evil puppet master, and he forces the puppets to reenact sad or violent scenes. Buratino leads the other puppets in a revolt against Carabas Barabas. The revolt is unsuccessful, and as punishment, Carabas Barabas sends Buratino on a journey to find the Golden Key. Which would open the Magic Kingdom. Along the way, on his journey to find the Golden Key, Buratino encounters a number of interesting characters. For example, the cat Basilio and the fox who both were trying to find the Golden Key first. Eventually, Buratino finds the Golden Key and he opens the door that leads to a world where puppets can put on their own performances. So hearing the story, I can imagine there is a surface level interpretation that would have been acceptable for Soviet authorities. And I can imagine there is also an interpretation that could be seen as subversive uh, against the Soviet power. The mystery stays still there, I think. And, and that's the great point about, we can see it as a wonderful fairy tale for kids, we can see this political surface and can speculate about did Weinberg have these ideas or, or not. We can listen to this wonderful score just as a great, colorful master score. In a world filled with issues of humanity and oppression, the very act of creating and consuming art can be provocative. Here in L.A., we are surrounded by art, not just in Walt Disney Concert Hall, but all throughout the streets of our city.